Greetings and welcome to another edition of The Sports Guys. I am Masabi Daily News sports reporter Mike Hautamaki and this is sports editor Jim Ramses. How do you do? Just here to talk about another week of uh, local and uh, I guess statewide sports. Yep. And national, some national a little bit later. But anyway, we'll uh, start off by talking about a little bit of high school basketball. I have done a a couple of pretty good games here in the last couple of weeks. Um, last week I covered Hibbing at Virginia Boys. Mm -hmm. um, that one was won by the Blue Devils, I think it was 54-52. Right. And uh, Cade Stackpool was a, <laughs> a thorn in the side of the Blue Jackets for the second time in two seasons. He uh, hit a half-court buzzer beater in, to end the uh, first half and then with two and a half seconds left on the clock, he pulled up and hit a shot uh, from inside the arc to uh, give the Blue Devils a victory. He just got their number. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, last year it was a, I think it was a three pointer with half a second on the clock to force overtime. Yeah, that was and, over in Hibbing. Yeah, that was at that game. And Virginia ended up winning that one. Right. And then <laughs> uh, they beat him like 55-53 at the game over here, but I don't think he factored into that one with a last second shot, but all Joel McDonald, the hitting coach, could do afterwards is smile. I mean, he gave Stackpole credit for hitting a tough shot. Yeah. He didn't feel that the defense was on him was too bad or too poor, but uh, I mean, just give the kid credit. He had ice water in his veins and those opportunities. And yeah. What else can the coach say? Yeah. Yeah. You know, that was a nice, nice response. Yeah. And then this week I uh, I covered Masabi East at Virginia Girls. It was my first time seeing the Giants play this year. And uh, they came away with a five-point victory, 56-51. And the uh, the standout in that <coughs> game was Megan West, the yes. senior guard for Masabi East. She had uh, 23 points. Twelve of them were in the second half, but um, it was really down the stretch where she made them count. She hit some big shots and then stepped to the free throw line and uh, basically put the game away from there. She's really been coming on this last <coughs> part of the season here. Yeah, Masabi East head coach uh, Chris Whiting said over the last six games she's really stepped up and uh, he attributed that to just her being more confident on the floor and uh, not getting as frustrated as she maybe was earlier in the season. Is that right? That's great. But uh, Spencer Rowney, the Virginia coach, he was pretty happy with the, the way his team played. Um, the, they just didn't get the bounces and the shots to fall in the last few minutes, but he thought they played good defense and did as much as they could on West. Yeah. She just found some uh, holes in the defense and okay. made them pay. Yeah, Def or, uh, Virginia's been playing good on defense with the girls, mm -hmm. as, you know, and the boys too, but the girls, that's kind of what they're making their name on now, I think, mm -hmm. while the offense comes around. Yeah. So. Last week also got to uh, had a pretty big couple, pretty big matchups with uh, Mountain Iron Buell, uh, ranked number one in the state uh, last Thursday a week ago. Uh, they took on the Northwoods Grizzlies, ranked number nine in the state. It was quite a matchup. They had a packed house up there in Cook, and uh, couldn't have asked for a much better game. MIB, you know, they got off to an early lead. Looked like they were gonna just kind of run away with the game, really. But uh, Northwood stayed with it and uh, started hitting their shots. MIB went a little bit cold in the second half, and uh, Northwoods took advantage. Um, Darby Youngstrom was double and triple teamed, and uh, you know she was getting. I think she had a dozen points. And Destiny Vilbrin, they were finally figured out in the second half to get it to get it to her. She was driving to the basket, making making the shots, making her free throws, and. Uh, it was quite a game to watch. It was fantastic, really. You know, it would be. <laughs> yeah. The second year in a row that Northwoods has had MIB's number during the regular season. Yeah. Um, See what happens now. They didn't. Um, they didn't uh, happen to meet in the postseason last year. Okay. But because Barnum knocked out Northwoods in the semifinals, but you just wonder, right. is that a, a matchup that we're maybe going to be seeing again? I hope so. Definitely hope so. That would be great. So, yeah, and then the MIB, they also, uh, two days later, they had to regroup and uh, 
take on the number two team in the state, Maranatha Christian Academy. That was a rematch from last year's uh, Class A title game. And uh, MIB came back. They uh, turned everything around. And uh, I think uh, Coach Buffetta made some adjustments. And uh, Chelsea Mason in particular was, I think she had 11 of their first 12 points. And they got off to their early lead. And they really just controlled the game all the way through. Mm -hmm. You know, and they had the uh, Maranatha has the Division One recruited center, but uh, MIB's Laura Osman and uh, Kathy Osman and Alec Canuti too. They were right there with her, uh, beating and banging the whole game, and they really took her out of her game. And uh, I think that's what won it for them inside. Laura Osman was uh, had a really good game. She was she looked like a Division One recruit herself. That was fun. Another packed house, I would assume. Yep, it was yeah quite packed and uh, you know MIB's doing the, they're turning down the lights and playing the fancy music when they intro their team now. I don't know if they're getting ready for the state tournament or what, but uh, yeah, it's a fun atmosphere. That's yeah. for sure. Good team. Interesting thing was, despite all those results, the uh, state rankings didn't change at all this week. Yeah, Mountain Iron is still number one. Maranatha is still number two, and Northwoods is still number nine. So. Yeah, you would have thought maybe Northwoods would move up a little bit. Yeah. That was a big win. Yeah. And then they didn't lose the rest of the week, I don't believe. No. Do they play? They, maybe they didn't play again. Yeah, because that was a Thursday night game. Yeah. But I don't know. We'll see how it shakes out in these last few weeks. Yeah, it should be a fun postseason. A few minutes before we uh, went on the air here, I was just on the internet looking up the uh, NJCAA national rankings for D Division Three men's basketball. I was curious to see where Vermillion was. Yeah. And uh, according to the rankings, they're number three um, in the country right now. They are 18-1 and one overall. And uh, if you're interested in seeing them play, they, uh, they're going to be here in town um, tomorrow on Saturday um, playing against the Masabi Range Norsemen at 3 o'clock. That's when tip-off is. Um, I was looking at the uh, just the um, statistical rankings for the MCAC Northern Division, and uh, the Vermilion is pretty much dominating in every category. Uh, Sean, they have a couple of guys, Sean Bear and Amici Wells. There, uh, I know Bear and Wells both have had some uh, good scoring games, mm -hmm. but they're only averaging around um, 15 a game. That's that right. Which, which points to uh, Vermillion's balance. I mean, they have several guys that can step up and score in any given game. But Bear is also leading the Northern Division in three-point shooting, uh, free throw percentage, although his number of attempts uh, weren't that high. Um, Amici Wells is first in field goal percentage. Ken McCray is first in rebounds per game. Uh, Wells is first in steals per game. And Anthony Burns is first in assists per game. Uh, the only category they didn't have the uh, top spot in was points per game, and that's because of Bakarius Dinkins, <laughs> the uh, standout freshman from Masabi Range. Um, he's at, uh, I think, a shade over 20 points per game at this point, and which puts him 15th in the country for Division Three, and I think he's at 12 rebounds per game as well, which is 13th in the country. Yeah, that's impressive. So That's nice for a freshman. Yeah, he's really wow. stepped up. Uh, him and Kevin Stackpool are the two main uh, two main cogs for Masabi Range. So, if you're looking for uh, some exciting basketball, stop by William Merton and Gymnasium on uh, Saturday afternoon. And the Vermilion just amazes me year after year. Uh, Paul McDonald gets the you know seems like the best players, and they uh, just keep winning. You know, mm -hmm. year after year, they always have a top top record, and I don't know how he does it. Yeah, I mean, they they just lost Taylor Smaller, who was an All-State, and I think he was All-American, too. Yeah. They they lose him, and they bring in some new guys, and they don't miss a beat. Yeah, and they come to Ely, Minnesota, which is kind of on the edge of the yeah. the earth, more or less. Yeah, but, uh, I know he's had some Australians up there, and it's like, how do you get these guys to come <laughs> play in Ely? But somehow he does it. Yeah, and they're good. Yeah. I don't know. And on the national scene, we're just uh, over a week away from the Super Bowl 47, and uh, we'll have Baltimore and uh, 
San Francisco in the big game this year. Um, had a couple excellent conference championship games. Um, Baltimore seems to be on a roll with uh, Joe Flacco and um, Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis retiring. That uh, seems to spur the team, if you ask me. Yeah. And uh, we're not going to make our predictions yet, and not until next week. But uh, the Ravens are definitely looking good. And uh, San Francisco with Colin Kaepernick, it's been fun to watch him kind of really emerge. You know, it was great. He uh, destroyed the Packers, so that was fun to watch. Mm -hmm. And he uh, <laughs> did his thing again last week. So uh, any thoughts on the conference championships at all, Mike? I didn't have much confidence in Atlanta pulling it out. I don't know what it is, but they just seem like a softer, um, less mentally tough team. They almost choked it away the uh, previous week. Yeah. So I wasn't surprised to see San Francisco beat them. And I actually wasn't that surprised with the Baltimore result either. Um, it wasn't the first time that the Ravens have clobbered the Patriots in the playoffs. Yeah. I think so. they just they got it going on right now, it seems. Yeah. You know, everything's going. Flacco's kind of hitting his stride. So that's, I like to see that. Yeah. I think the X factor in the Super Bowl is going to be Kaepernick. Okay, yeah. Just because he's a first-year player, um, how is he going to handle that? situation, just being on the big stage. Yeah, um, I agree. National audience, everything at stake. And like you said, Flacco has really been playing well. Mm -hmm. And he's a veteran. So. Yeah, I'm kind of waiting for Kaepernick to fall down, but uh, he hasn't done it yet. Yeah. So, And uh, truth be told, I have to root for Baltimore, though, then I can say my Broncos lost to the eventual Super Bowl champions. So that's, uh, give me something to uh, hold my hat on. Hang my hat on. <laughs> yeah, but if the Niners won, I could say that the Vikings beat the Super Bowl champions. That's right. That's not bad. During the regular season. That's so, yeah. That's not bad either. I don't know. We'll see. It's uh, Harbaugh versus Harbaugh. That's the uh, big storyline that everyone's going with. And uh, I guess if I had to pick sides as far as that, I would go with John. I'm not a huge fan <laughs> of Jim. He just seems petulant and spoiled and arrogant when you uh, watch him the way, just the way he acts on the sideline. You know, like so. the ranting and raving on the sideline? No, like <laughs> when that call went against him last week, it was a bad call that uh, cost San Francisco on a bad catch. Yep. But, I mean, just he, uh, just the way he acted, it was something like you would expect to see from a grade schooler. I don't know. Yeah, just over the top. Yeah, and I'm not a huge fan of Ray Lewis. I'll be glad when he rides off into the sunset and <laughs> I can choose not to watch him when he's an analyst on Sundays, but I don't know. I guess lesser of the two evils, I'll go with Lewis and John Harbaugh. Okay. How about you? My pick? Well, who, 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 Harbaugh? who do you want to win? Yeah, I suppose I have to go with John. Yeah, you know, just for the Ravens' sake, that's all. No real reasoning. <laughs> I don't know who's going to win yet. I still got to do some thinking on that. But at this point, I'm hoping it's the Ravens. That'll do it for another edition of the Sports Guys. And uh, be sure to follow us on Twitter. I'm uh, at JimRom2012. And Mike is at Houts81. For all your uh, nightly local sports updates. And also you can... Uh, View our stories in the Masabi Daily News and at virginiamn.com. Good night.